Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. We fight how we train. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at their media day workouts. And we're going to be trying to pick up on some things that they've been working on. You know, obviously, some of the stuff is going to be really subtle. A lot of the stuff, you know, they may be like, oh, I'm going to hide this one trail. Or they'll be, you know, whatever, whatever. But we're going to see what we can see. Um, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Tank's and Ryan's. Um, there's a lot of footage, so we're just going to be chilling and talking and stuff. Um, <clears throat> right away, just being sharp. A few things I want to point out here uh, that I don't like about Tank. Uh, most of the time, his head stays in kind of one position, right? Uh, he's, he's fast, man. He's really fast, so usually he's the first guy to the dance, so it doesn't always matter, um, but not a lot of head movement either. Now, we know that he can pull counter and he can do some stuff, um, but most of this stuff, he's just practicing some striking, just, you know, tap, 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 get his weight moving. It's not really that dynamic. Um, and unfortunately, that kind of breeds, um, um, how do you say it, uh, bad habits. You know, a lot of times, uh, how do you say it, you'll, in, you'll go for a, in favor of a workout rather than a technical drill, Right. You know, you know you can get a better workout if you do it this way, right? Versus um, making sure that you, you know what I mean? Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> um, so one of the things, and I prepared like a little mini film study for it. One of the things that I really don't like from Tank, he always exits on the front foot. He always circles with his head toward the front foot. And he has this like pivoting thing. So this one's not bad here, right? If he's on the line here, boom, pendulum steps off the line, gets off the line, makes it to the front foot position. He could throw a hook if someone's chasing him. <clears throat> it's pretty good. And this is when he's circling to the left, right? He's a southpaw circling to the left. Well, it's all good. Now he has to start circling to the right. And look at this position here, you guys. Is this a boxing position? Is he, is he you know, in position one or is he in position two? Is he... You know, what, can he throw a punch from here? What can he do from here, right? We're going to talk about some of this stuff because this is where this is where the biggest hole that Tank Davis has, okay? So we're going to watch a little bit more of his workout, see if we could peek, uh, peek out anything else that he's going to be doing, you know, again. So here he is, again, getting to that same position, getting his way toward the front foot. Now this move here, right? He just does this little circle thing right here, and he does this little pendulum step here to regain control of the center of the, the, the ring. Again, something he also does in his fights. And then if he doesn't pivot on the front foot, he has to control space. So if he doesn't do this shit, right? And again, this is a fake boxing move. People who teach this stuff, it's not real, okay? If Tank Davis does this against Ryan Garcia, he's going to get annihilated, okay? I'm going to show you guys... But when he gets to that position, right, here he is. He either has to pivot or he has to control some space because he's going to get attacked. Okay? So there, and now he has to go back to his pivot, pivot. Getting back to that same position. Now, when is he playing on the back foot? You know, we know he has some stuff, you know, like pull counters back there. Uh, but most of this stuff, um, training like he's fighting somebody who's slower than him. You know, and, and interestingly enough, um, Ryan Garcia may be slower than him in some spots. You know, I think, um, like, <clears throat> how do you say, uh, oh, I, I talked about it, um, about the Alex Perea fight, pre-fight with um, Adesanya. Adesanya is faster at moving around. He's faster at getting into position. He's faster, you know, but once they're planted... Uh, Alex Perea is faster. He's more explosive and he hits harder. And I think this this fight is the same, okay. And I think that that if Ryan Garcia is leading, he has a better opportunity to um, get planted quicker and understand where to get it, where to get planted. But if he's the one being led to, um, his defense sucks, right? And then uh, he's not going to be able to. Uh, find those positions to get planted to land strikes as quickly as he does going forward. And um, even so, he still might be fast enough to catch Tank on the on the way in. But if Tank is doing that pivoting stuff, right, that's going to be indicative of him being the one being chased down. 
which means that Ryan Garcia is getting to, to pick and choose when he gets planted, time it on his own accord, right? Here he is circling to the left, right? Control, if he has to pivot, control the space. Circling back, okay. Again, getting to that front foot. Look at that. He's losing. This move is making him lose in his own shadow boxing. This is ridiculous. <clears throat> but this is a real serious problem. Um, because when he gets to that front foot, he pivots off the front foot and his head stays there. Um, and that's just not the way that the technique works. You're not allowed to make a really, really high degree pivot there. It has to be really small. Um, you're fine, Tank. Is he fucking hobbling around now? <clears throat> Two foot punching. Down up, down up, down up, down up. Beat, beat. That was a little bit of that pivot right there. We didn't get to see the upper body as much. All right, I like it. Gets on the line. Jab, pull, jab. So drawing a counter, so hitting a jab. Oh, now he's playing his boxing game, right? <clears throat> High-level shadow boxing right here. Gets on the line with the jab. Okay, what's going to happen in the next sequence? Okay, oh, I'm going to jab, and just like I did last time, and now he's going to jab at me. Oh, and I get off the line, and I jab him back, right? Playing the games, playing boxing games here. Practicing a little bit of his striking, right? Getting on the line, boom, right? Like if a guy was chasing him around, hopping into this shot here. <clears throat> yeah, just a lot of, uh, not a lot of head movement, a lot of speed, a lot of control of the line. Uh, but through punches... Little pull counter right here. Boom. He doesn't punch off of it, but keeping his pace going. Ah, and that move again. This is not a real boxing move, guys. Don't get caught doing this. So yeah, just a lot of uh, Tank running around, finding a random sequence to put himself in and just throwing a random combination. Um, a few things, again, to be worried about, but this is just a real basic workout for him. He's just trying to keep himself, uh, keep himself moving. Little combos there, going to the front foot or to the back foot. I think Ryan Garcia's... Uh, stuff is a lot more dynamic. I hadn't actually watched um, much of Tank Davis. A little stress on his technique there. I want to hear him do that. Yeah, he's super fast. Definitely looks like he's uh, playing with the double in bag here. <clears throat> Still uh, not a lot of crossing the line in his movements there. A lot of sharpness, right? A lot of speed, but, um, you know, very perfunctory punches. is really interesting. Getting on the line, probing with the a rear hand first. Ah, oh, it's getting all choppy now. All right. One, two, two, pendulum. Hook, 
uppercut. A little bit of a roll in there. Practicing a lot of speed on the line. I wonder if he's expecting really long sequences. You know, I wouldn't imagine so. He's probably just trying to use it to stay in shape, but practicing his shots with a little more power here. I like it. A little bit of a faint. <clears throat> but again, interesting, not very dynamic, right? Very dynamic in speed, but his head position is not very dynamic, not crossing the line a lot. A lot of two-foot punching, though. A lot of driving from both feet. Again, Tank Davis is a master at that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Actually, let's go ahead and start a little bit of that film study stuff I was talking about. Okay, so here we've got Tank in round seven. Fainting, trying to circle to the left here, right? And notice, notice he doesn't get into a, a stance, right, a boxing position. He keeps circling, penduluming like I said he was going to until he wants to approach the line with his right shoulder. Okay, now he's getting into that position. And as soon as... Uh, Cruz starts controlling space or getting into a position where he can cut the ring off. Um, Davis is going to stop being able to pivot there, right? Bring his weight, get his weight on the front foot and, and swing his back leg. And it, it already starts costing him here, right? Because we've seen him how he has to pivot there. And now he's getting caught, stuck in the corner. And now this is really important, okay? Look what happens. Look what, how he like kind of slips and trips here. It's very difficult. And I'm going to say, you know, impossible for you to do this move because if you if your opponent boom jumps on your line and takes lead foot dominance right boom how are you supposed to pivot now how are you supposed to get your back leg to swing now you're also in the corner how are you supposed to get your back leg to swing right but think about even if the fact that they're not in the corner right how does he get how does he get around how does he continue circling to the right okay now I do want to say, luckily for him, uh, Ryan Garcia is not really a lead foot dominance guy. Here he is. This is Tank Davis trying to pivot on the front foot, right? But again, he doesn't move his weight to the back foot ever, right? Now look at this position that he's in here. You see this? How after he escapes, boom, okay, I'm off the line. Fuck that, right? I'm good. I ain't tripping. And now, you know, we have got some more clips. We're going to take a look at a bunch of stuff. Here he is, catches him here, right? Doing the same move, tries the same thing, and now he's getting smacked by Cruz, right? Again, leaning toward the front foot. He finds a nice trap this time, right? Gets off the line. He does take a punch here, by the way. That, was, that move was not free, right? He made it to the front foot. He got hit hard, just like I said, again. And now he has to make it out that way again. Another body shot. Look at how he peels. Doesn't get hit to the head, but again, it's not a real boxing move. We saw how he practiced it, right? With his hand all up in the air and like all pivoted on the front leg. And now he's going to get hit with the real shot, right? The one that really snaps his head back right there. Uh, and again, Ryan Garcia is a lot, he's a lot faster, you know? He has even more reach, okay? Now here's Cruz um, being stalked by Davis, right? Davis is coming forward, trying to get his weight to the front foot, controlling Davis right there, getting to the front foot. And now, again, he gets him as he's coming forward. Davis is trying to come forward and bring his weight to the front foot. Look at what happens to him, right? Getting his weight to the front foot, boom, jumps on his line. And now Davis has to continue bringing his weight forward because he doesn't transfer his weight to the back foot. He doesn't ever get his, um, his back heel down. He always keeps his weight on the ball of the back foot, almost always, um, in a front foot footwork structure so he can be the fastest and the strongest. And again, if we go back, I just want to point out, in his shadow boxing, right? Where is he in his shadow boxing? He's always right here, ready to explode from his front foot and his back foot on the front foot, uh, with the front foot flat and on the ball of the back foot, ready to punch with both feet. Boom, explode, explode. And he's trying to stay in a very similar position. Right? And again, I don't know if we'll exactly be able to find that clip again, because not that it's fucking disappeared, you know, but. Oh, is that it?
There we go. This is the move that he does. And that's the one that he does. And now notice, penduluming, right? Just like I said. Again, fight. we fight how we train. And it's costing him. You know, it's costing him big here. We're going to take a look at that a little bit later. Okay. But uh, let's go ahead and see. I think he does also oh, jump rope. That's cool. Okay. Some random heavy bag stuff. Um, it's nice of his coach to hold the bag for him. Um, let him practice his striking a little better. It's pretty fun like that. Um, you know, just drilling, two foot punching, explosions, right? Just practicing random punches. Again, um, sometimes you practice your striking, right? Sometimes you practice your boxing. Um, it's important that you have, uh, you know, that you practice both. You know, you don't just practice your boxing. You don't just practice your punching. Um, and Tank Davis finding a place in there to practice. Oh, just, okay. When, who in the right mind throws, you know, uh, three straight right hands in a row or straight left hands in a row other than Leo Santa Cruz and gets knocked out, right? <laughs> you don't really do that. Uh, but he's practicing just like he was doing in his shadow boxing. Um, he's probably uh, working out to the music, you know, whatever the beat is. He's probably hitting the bag at the beat. Um, and that's why there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to what he's doing all the time. Pretty cool stuff here. Jumping on the line here. Bop. Gets around. Gets lead foot dominance. Pendulum steps back. Throws the hook over in, instead of the, the left hand. 1-1-2. One, one, but I suspect that that's why um, his shadow boxing was like that. He was just kind of chilling. Um, but it is one of those habits that it looks like he has anyway. Some random striking. Yeah, we're going to move over to... Uh, um, Ryan Garcia's media workout, which, again, I think it was pretty dynamic. Turn that music off. It's going to kill me. Come on. Oh, man. I can't believe I listened to most of that. All right. So getting on the line. So first step, right? You're going to get on the line. You're going to throw your jab. Right? Why are you going to throw your jab? Where well, are going to control space? Right? Oh, obviously. Uh, right? Um, trying to be fast more so than powerful uh, to get more control over the line rather than more damage on your opponent. Following it up with the two. Two, three. Oh, a little combination. Practice some of the stuff that Javante Davis was practicing, except for Davis didn't practice a lot of defense in his shadow boxing. Right? Not a lot of blocking, not a lot of slipping and rolling, and um, not a lot of catching, not a lot of pull counters, a lot of striking, right? So Ryan Garcia is at least practicing blocking some stuff. Uh, but most of this stuff, um, you know, like focus pad training um, for some speed, which nothing wrong with that. Um, you do want to make sure that it's like combat ready and it's supposed to be stuff you're going to be doing in the fights. Um, you should not be um, catching punches all the way out there. Um, yeah, all the way out there. Here. Um, if you're going to be blocking, because uh, notice his arm and his elbows all the way up, um, and his hand, you know, it's just not a good block, you know. Um, you're covering very little surface area. Um, so, you know, not great. But I don't expect this to be like a the kind of drill that he's expecting to take into combat, I think it's like, um, again, you don't just want to practice um, your striking or your boxing. You want to practice your striking, right? And he's practicing like a speed drill, right? Trying to go fast rather than it being necessarily boxing. Again, the better you can get at combining that stuff, the better. But a uh, little probing right hand here. This is one clip that I did see earlier, so I did prepare like a little clip. But, oh, would you ever do that in a fight? Well, maybe. Oh, okay. Well, that one's not going to work. Let's go back and get it over here. There we go. So, here he is just practicing as his opponent takes a step with the left leg, gets the weight to the front foot, boom, snap, right? Excellent shot. Timing him right here. And again, finding a place to practice that on the mitts with his coach here. Boom. Right? Just, uh, you know, easy, simple right hand. 
Um, and yeah, sometimes you're just going to throw that shot like that. Again, it's not about hurting your opponent all the time. Sometimes it's just about um, controlling space, right? Score a point. See if you can get control of your opponent. Yeah, some basic stepping jab stuff. Ones, ones, twos. See if he starts throwing the hooks. Okay, look at this. Something we don't usually see from Garcia. Trying to circle, trying to move around, right? Trying to find a way. Oh, circling this way. Back, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, and then into a punch. So pretty good uh, movement here. Trying to find a way to walk his opponent into some shots. Um, it'd be really interesting. <sighs> Uh-oh. So this move that he just did here, um, that's the exact same move that Tank Davis is doing, but as a southpaw. Again, uh, this guy, you know, I don't want to like, I don't know who that guy is. Maybe, uh, maybe he used to be a pro fighter. Maybe this, maybe that. He don't look like a fucking pro fighter to me. He don't look like somebody ever fought. He looked like somebody that just picked up the mitts and said, hey, let's see what this looks like, you know. Um, and he can't correct this guy. He can't tell this guy not to do that move. Um, not to roll like that, that's bad. And uh, um, I don't think he'll pay for it as much as Tank would because he's so much bigger than Tank. But um, uh, but yeah, if he doesn't know how to teach him how to roll correctly, he should probably not be having him roll. But uh, we'll see if we see that a little bit more. All right, was that our first hook, our second hook, our third hook? Okay, so here he is again, getting on the front foot. He's going to go one, and now he's getting a front foot footwork pattern where he's got the ball of the back foot. Uh, on, he's on the ball of the back foot, and he's got the front foot planted, and he's going to throw a two and a three, and both of these punches are going to be thrown off the same footwork pattern, which is why he can throw them so fast. Boom, boom. Okay, um, Tank Davis was doing the same thing in most of his sequences. That's why he wasn't moving his head because he was just keeping one footwork pattern, seeing what punches he could throw from that angle. Um, and it allows you to be fast. And um, it's one of those things that southpaws are usually pretty good at. And again, Ryan Garcia's left hand is better than his right hand probably is a southpaw. Is he? I don't know. Um... But um, uh, how do you say this? Lack of head movement there. Oh, Ryan Garcia probably learned it from the Cobra bag, though. Um, and that's why he did it. Now, again, bad roll after, right? Let's see what else he's making him do. Again, I like the, that they're making him move around and box and stuff, but Ryan Garcia... While he's doing all this this stuff, he's not moving his weight, right? He might his head is in one position, right? And that means that he pendulum steps, right? A lot of pendulum steps here, pendulum, 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 just to cover a little bit of gr of ground, right? And you can't really see all that's going on, but you can tell that he's got the same kind of franticish pace circling, right? If that's his target, why is he not moving his head at all, right? So there's definitely some problems with the circling stuff that he's doing. Um, it's definitely new to him. Again, those are not good blocks. Um, they're just for speed drills. Um, and like, you know, you do want shortcuts to be able to practice some of that stuff. But um, you don't, you can't really afford to take shortcuts when you're fighting Tank Davis. Okay, so pull. And then a little combination here. Boom. As he's pulling the straight left hand. Boom. Straight. And then hook. Uh, and this is a cool one too because when he pulls, he goes down. He can get his, his footwork pattern. Right? He crouches. And now he gets his front foot down and stays on the ball of the back foot. And now he's going to explode into the correct footwork pattern. And he can go two, three. Um, and throw both of those punches really quickly with, even without moving his head. Okay. So pull. Boom, boom. Roll. Boom. And his roll, again, is atrocious. It's horrible. It's absolutely terrible. Um, 
Yeah, that role is really bad. Again, it, it looks exactly like Tank Davis's role. Um, his mechanics, you know, I wish I could see his feet a little better. Again, some cool stuff from um, from Ryan Garcia and his his stuff. Actually, practicing some drills, right? Again, I, I thought Ryan Garcia would be a little bit more uh, casual about giving away good strategies. Uh, he's the less experienced guy, the less this, less that. He's been around, you know. So he's, you know, even though you don't want shortcuts in your training camp, because he probably doesn't know. You know, that he should be making those blocks better. Not kind of cool here, right? Getting off the line here. Boom, boom. Stepping into the hook like he's controlling some space. Um, the hell was I going to say? Um, but not afraid to show his hand, right? <laughs> like very basic striking drills. Um, oh, is he going to try to pull counter me? And it's interesting, too, because Tank Davis is very one punch at a time, right? Again, circling. Uh, uh, no. It's bad. It's bad. You can't bring your weight toward your southpaw opponent like that. Because you're just going to walk right into his hook. And then what about the other hand? Chubby, can you hit him with the other hand from here? So walking him down, getting into this position, hook, peel, and then more pull counters, more hooking and peeling. Some interesting stuff. Yeah, I wonder. I do wonder if Ryan Garcia is actually going to try to box Tank and not just let Tank walk him down. Is there any more training? This video, 46 minutes, and then there's 10 minutes of him moving around. Tank Davis's video is two hours. Two hours. Okay. All right, Ken Doll from the fifties. <clears throat> I think Tank does have some cool stuff. Practicing an overhand. Okay, get back to the bag. Oh, is that it? Did I skip through it all? Okay, maybe we'll watch. Let's see. Super fast. Back foot, front foot, stepping jab. Good timing. Back foot. Front foot, as he gets there, walking onto the line, he's sneaking into his left hand here. Very, very sneaky, right? Not a, No telegraphing, right? Just kind of able to slide into that shot, and then just super explosive. I wonder how much that hat company is paying him. Some cool stuff here. Getting on the line, boom, boom, pivot. Boom, he's going to take an angle. Pendulum step-ish motion, straight left hand, uppercut, pendulum again, taking another angle. Now, I wonder why he never does that. You know, I've never seen him do stuff like that in his fights. Gets on the line, boom, boom, one, two, pull, two, roll under the line, two, three. Very, very clean sequences, one, two, pull, break in the sequence, give your opponent a time to punch, punch, Roll under the line. Come back with a 2-3. Sick. Sick sequence. And then follows it up with another 1-2. Uh, okay. Probably just fine-tuning some of his striking right there. Oh, did he just do the same combination? No.
now he's back to that pace where I think he's just chilling and listening to music and just, you know, driving his weight into the bag. Again, he's not really, it's a little bit boxing, it's a little bit drill-like, um, and it's important to have, you know, patterns and stuff that you can just be, yeah, practicing some random striking. Bop, 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 bop. And again, uh, the challenge, down up, down up, right? Two foot punching, right? Down up, 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 down up. How quickly you can get your weight into the bag from the ground. Boom, 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 boom. You know, in his version, right? If you guys check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System, that's his version of the Fouts Boxing uh, One Inch Punch, right? Or if you, you know, the Bruce Lee One Inch Punch. Um, but Tank Davis does it again. Bruce Lee didn't teach it from two feet. He taught it from he taught it from the hip, right? Um, but uh, that's not how you, you know. There's more going on than just that. And if you guys want to check it out, um, again. Uh, very likely the greatest discovery in combat sports history uh, in terms of technique, um, in terms of everything, you know, um, how to generate power, all this stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, learning to, to do everything that you do with two feet instead of just one. Now, real quick, if we go back, does it go back? think so so this move here forward back forward into the right hand or the straight left hand right boom as he shoots this jab right let's just pretend he's gonna go forward back as he's going forward and when he gets there stepping jab do you know do you guys know what a good counter to the stepping jab is like that Let's see if he practices any. Where is it? So anticlimactic. <laughs> um, but as he's moving around here, not this drill, right? There we go. So if your opponent jumps on your line with a stepping jab, right? Pull, right hand, left hook. Right? Now, this is really, really cool because um uh in the orthodox or in the uh in the open stance uh southpaw versus orthodox uh the target is going to be roughly the same spot whether you're pulling the one jab or the one one straight left hand right so the the punches that uh tank davis is most likely going to use uh to get on the line uh with with um um, Ryan Garcia, stepping jab because he's shorter, right? Can be pull countered by that combination he was just openly practicing. Gets on the line here. If Ryan Garcia sees it coming, easy pull counter here too. Pull, boom, boom. Which means that Tank Davis will need combinations uh, to be able to keep up um, in order to beat those um, those pull counters. He'll need to fight and in, in punch in combination. Uh, to, you know, manage the the difference in rhythm and timing of the pull counters and where those beats are uh, and hope to counter. Let's see, would this be even a good one? Boom, boom. So if the pull counter comes off the jab, he hits him here. Boom. Maybe he gets off the line from the left hook because he hit him with the, the straight left hand when he was trying to hit him with the right hand. Right? Boom. Gets off the line with the hook and then can counter him, Maybe. It does look uh, boom, boom, and now he's pulling away from the hook, right? Boom, rolling under the hook, boom, boom. So maybe that's uh, that drill right there, that sequence right there is one of the things that he's been working on because it is pretty unusual, boom, boom, right, to come here with the pull, with the shoulder roll, um, Boom, in the middle of this sequence here. So maybe he's anticipating a hook. Maybe that's like a pretty big uh a pretty big thing for the fight. You know, maybe that's one of the things that uh Tank has been working on. <clears throat> um because he does specifically boom and then gets back on the line, right? And then gets under that here. 
right? And then boom, boom. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder. I do think that that's all the tank is going to do, though. It's just going to run now. Running, jogging, yeah. Chilling. An interview. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Interesting fight. Interesting fight. Um, I still haven't picked a winner yet. I still don't know. Uh, because, um, you know, I think early in the fight, Ryan Garcia was really apprehensive. I think he was really nervous. I think that there was a lot going on on his side and, you know, being a mega fight and, you know, Tank Davis, I don't want to say he's like a celebrity, you know, but like, it's Tank Davis, bro, you know? And, um, you know, the whole thing like, hey, we're going to be friends after this, right? Like, because like, how cool is it, right? You like, <laughs> you get to become a boxing celebrity and then like, what? You go and you hang out with other boxing celebrities, right? You're like, because if you're a boxer, like, that's like one of the coolest things you can do, right? Go hang out, I guess, right? And then like, you finally make it and now you got to fight the guy that you're like been wanting to hang out with and he's like, could we be cool? <laughs> Anyway, the whole thing is just hilarious to me. But I think that that Tank, I don't know if he got under his skin, but he he made Ryan com- want to compete with him. You know, he made Ryan want to be on his level for like whether it was like the disrespect or the whatever, whatever it was that Tank was saying at him that really made Garcia feel like he belonged in there with him. You know, and that's what it, it kind of sounded like. He picked up a little bit of confidence towards the um, the um, uh, press conferences. And, um, you know, that's that's the best thing for him. If he can just get his ass in the gym and beat on those bags for, you know, like if they're saying he's working seven days a week and he's training seven days a week, and he's actually training seven days a week, um, Tank is in for a rough night. You know, he's in for a rough night because if he's not being aggressive, that means he's letting Ryan Garcia come forward, and that means he's trying to do that thing where he pivots on the front foot and tries to escape, but he has to be super athletic, and that's going to wear him out. Even if he's successful at being super athletic, right? Zab Judah was super athletic, and Miguel Cotto beat on his body like a drum. Boom, 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 boom. Man, I hated that fight. I thought I thought Cotto was going to sleep for sure. You know, I never bet on my, against my boy Zab though. Um, but that fight taught me a lot about you know southpaws and you know this because you know Zab Judah was one of my idols. You know, growing up, I was a southpaw too. I'm a left-handed guy, and um, you know, I watch all the Zab Judah fights. How do you do this? How do you do this shit? How's this work? <laughs> you know, so you watch all the all your inspirations, and I, I remember seeing him do that that same thing that Tank Davis does, where he tries to pivot on the front foot, and Cotto just battered him, just battered him, and uh, you know it was terrible. Now, say you go back and you watch. Uh, this is a very interesting. Mm, I'll save it. I'll save it. Okay. If Ryan Garcia is the one going forward and he's practicing his pull counters, let's take a look at those pull counters again. Right? Because if he's the one going forward and he's getting to practice these pull counters, or is he practicing them going backwards, right? Hopefully he's practicing them both. It looks like he's practicing them more going, f- getting planted. Even though it looks like he's circling and stuff here, he's not really. But maybe a little bit. So like, so say we take a step, right? Back foot, front foot, pull, boom, boom. Now let's take a look at Tank Davis here. Boom, boom, right? Let's pretend Tank is Ryan, right? Let's switch the roles, right? Let's pretend these guys are... They're, you know, the other guy is the southpaw, and he's the orthodox. When Tank Davis gets his right shoulder on the line, if he's in position to pull off the pull counter that Ryan Garcia is attempting, the timing of that is going to be when he gets his right shoulder and his right foot to the line. Boom. Right? So here. Right? And now all he has to do is wait for his opponent. Right? Back, 
forward, but he's the one going first, right? Getting smacked, getting here, boom. And now here's that moment, right? He's here. This is the pull counter moment, right? Bah! Now we know that he eats a body shot, and he should be smashing back onto the line with the straight left hand and the right hook at this beat. Now, Cruz has seen this look from Davis, right? I'm just saying that this is a little bit of a biased clip just because Cruz knows this has been happening all this time, right? It's the seventh round, right? Tank Davis is not, you know, he's not slowing down, but him being able to do this fast enough that Cruz can't catch him with hard shots, time it, right, and predict where he's going to be, it's, it's over, right? Cruz has figured it out. Um, but there are times earlier in the fight where it doesn't happen. Right? Actually, let's take a look at one of those two. Um, boom. So here, when Tank gets his foot on the, on the ground, right? Instead of having to peel away immediately, if he uses that, that pull counter, right? Boom. And now he can sit there and wait and have a trap as he's circling. That may be what Ryan Garcia is trying to do there, right? Trying to walk around and then pull, boom, boom, right? Um... Um, but it also can work the other way as he's walking forward to the line, gets on the line, gets attacked by a probe, and then pull counters it immediately. You know, so... <sighs> I think... Man, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think... I don't know if I'm gonna... I'm gonna stick with it, but I might be rocking with Ryan Garcia. I might be rocking with Ryan Garcia. Um, like I said in in the training video... You know, Tank Davis is doing that thing where he rocks out and he's just, he's not really being dynamic in his training right there. He's all on one position, right? Throwing his punches here, boom, 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 right? Um, but, um, um, which means that he's going to be fighting off of first contact, first and second contact, quite a bit. Uh, and Ryan Garcia is practicing everything on first contact. <laughs> you know, first and second contact. Everything that he's doing, you know, is to be able to be able to dominate the line. You know, so um, I don't know. I don't know who I'm picking still, but um, I, you know, I like that sequence of Tank Davis on the heavy bag. Tank Davis also looked uh, really strong, really sharp, uh, really strong, I want to say, really strong. Um, whereas Ryan Garcia looked really fast and slappy and explosive. I couldn't quite tell if he looked like he was hitting hard because um, the guy he's catching mitts with is like, he's not a fighter, you know, like, is it good mitt work? Like, who knows? You know, it doesn't look like good mitt work. Um, and there's other stuff that he could be doing to min-max the and get the most value out of that um, that he's not doing, you know. But um, but yeah, I like I like where Ryan Garcia's approach is right now. You know, I like that he's got some strategies. Um, we'll see if they if they pay off. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, if you guys got any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Um, and don't forget to check out the Faust Boxing Combat System on Two Foot Punching. Okay. Um, not only will I teach you everything that these guys are able to do well, but I'll teach you the stuff that they don't do. Okay, And you'll understand what you're supposed to do instead of pivoting on the front leg like Davis does. You'll understand through my drills like, that I call the track about all, all of combat theory, understanding positioning, um, and all these other great things. Uh, on top of that, I'll also teach you exactly what Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia do with their hands to generate power. Okay, unequivocally, but not just that. It's better than what they do because you will, be, you will be learning to increase your punching power for the rest of your life by knowing and understanding these, these rules and these theories. Um, you'll never have limits. It'll never be, oh, you're just born with it. You're just this. No, you're going to learn how to do what they do. Okay? Um, and again, I'm the first person in history to be able to figure out any of it um, to figure out exactly how your kinetic chain works um, so that anyone, man or woman, can generate massive amounts of power, okay, in a very little time, okay? Now, the down-up stuff, right? Down-up, down-up, two-foot punch theory. When we saw Tank on his heavy bag, right, and I was saying he's fast, 
right? And he's two foot punching. When he threw all those straight left hands, boom, 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 boom. That was incredible. <laughs> that was really fast, you know. And the only difference is, right, between you and him is that he can do these two foot punches very quickly, okay? He's been doing this so long, a lot of that stuff he does on accident. He's eliminated a lot of the movements that don't go with his punch to allow his punch to be very efficient. Um, however, I'm going to teach you how it actually works so that you'll build strength throughout your entire kinetic chain every time you drive your weight into the bag. It's not just going to be like when you work out, oh, you're getting tired because you're tired because you, you felt like you ran six miles. You're going to get tired in your arms. You're going to get tired in your hands. You're going to get tired in your feet in all of your entire kinetic chain. Okay. Um, anyway, check out the Fast Boxing Combat System. It's going to revolutionize combat systems uh, and combat for all of history.